Hey scrappers and recyclers, it's Shark Scrapper. I am busy reorganizing and rebinning my motherboards. Why? Because my primary buyer, BoardSort.com, has just reorganized their motherboard categories. Now, they did it for a very good reason, which we're going to take a look at, but it just means that I'm going to have to do a little reorganizing. Come on, let's dive in and understand what's going on with the value of motherboards. Now, unless you routinely sell to BoardSort.com, you may not have noticed a change that they made to their pricing or even understand why they made the change. But they have reorganized the way they grade the motherboards. And Chris put together a very good video explaining sort of the history, the progression of the value of motherboards and how that's led to what they've done to recategorize. Now, I encourage you to go watch the video that Chris put together. I'm going to try to recreate the information here to help you all out in one place. Uh, and since I have to reorganize my boards anyway, why not? If you go back in time to, say, the mid-90s or so, you're going to find that PCs have got these large socket motherboards. The U.S. quarter will fit down inside of this socket. And as you look more closely at this board, you will see why this board has a lot of value. One gold-cornered BGA, frequently two. And if it doesn't have two gold-cornered BGAs, it's probably going to have a couple of these real nice flatback ICs. And the pins are very heavily gold-plated, including the sockets and expansion card sockets. So there's some really good gold value here for scrap recovery. Now, along this si same line, and not to get confusing, but they get put together in board sort because they are the same value, uh, you have the socket CPU type boards, and they'll get sold with the large socket motherboards, again, because you can see we have multiple gold cornered BGAs. We have lots of nice big ICs all around. And we have some really nice gold plating on all of the various connectors. Another board that is a little bit confusing, and you'll understand why I'm going to say a little bit confusing in, in a very short while, is this kind of board that has this big plastic uh, CPU socket. You might confuse that with what we're going to call a, an AMD or a solid plastic socket in a little bit. But in this case, we're looking beyond just the socket and we're looking at the quality of these chips. Look at multiple gold cornered BGAs. We have a nice ceramic CPU. We have a lot of large ICs on here, huge tantalum capacitors all over. So this also gets sold as a large socket motherboard. I know that can be a little bit confusing, but that's just, they're of the same value in gold recovery. So that's why they all get put together. Now, as time went on, the manufacturers figured out some ways to save a little bit of money and reduce the amount of gold. That's what's really costing the money on these things. And so the way you see that is this is a square plastic socket. It's a P4. Uh, type CPU. You've got two gold corner BGAs. Uh, you'll have a few more ICs scattered about. Uh, the pins, if you were to compare the gold plating on the pins, they're a little less quality than what we saw on the large socket motherboards. So there's a little bit less gold value in the scrap recovery. And when they were making these boards, they were a little less expensive to make. So the cost to buy this PC in its day would have been a little bit less than, you know, just five to ten years prior to this. Time marches forward and we're getting into the mid-2000s-ish, you know, the 2006-ish plus kind of time frame. And the PC manufacturers are still trying to lower the cost of the PCs. 
uh, to get more and more into the hands of the consumers. And the way they go about doing that is, well, first we shift to this metal socket. We're using a little bit less gold now. The socket is square here. Let's get right over top of that. You can see the socket is square. And these are kind of like little springs here. The CPUs are now pinless CPUs. So they just sit down on those pads. They don't require the pins to go in anything. The other big thing that you'll notice with these boards is that you now have the introduction of the flip chips. Uh, very little, if any, gold in the flip chips. And then there's gonna be one gold tab BGA still on these boards. The sockets for the uh, uh, RAM and expansion cards, the gold plating is less uh, in, uh, you know, less thickness, less quality. Uh, and again, that's why all of these boards, even though some are different colors, are going to be about the same scrap recovery value. The other thing you want to look for in identifying a small metal socket motherboard is the candy cane or J shape of the socket release lever. We'll compare this to the next category in just a minute, but for the small socket motherboard, look for that J or candy cane shape to the socket release lever. So it's very important to note now that in board sorts new categories, the color of the board is no longer the determining factor. It is the type of socket and therefore the age of the board. Getting into the 2014-ish kind of time frame, we still have the metal socket, but we notice that it's now a more rectangular shape, and we have this crooked arm here. We now have the i-series CPUs. i-series motherboards have no gold tab BGAs. You still have the flip chip. If you look around, there's a lot fewer gold-bearing material kind of items. So yeah, there's an IC there, a tiny one there. The board scrap value has gone down considerably. The price of the PC has gone down considerably. Uh, and uh, therefore, these are all categorized now for, with BoardSort.com as I-series boards. This crooked arm and this rectangular shape socket are the dead giveaways. But the other thing that you'll notice is there won't be any gold tab BGAs. They'll just be a flip chip and there'll be fewer ICs compared to the older boards. And the gamers might throw you off a little bit, but if you just take a look inside this socket here, you've got a metal socket. It's a rectangular shape. There's no gold tab BGAs on here anywhere. So again, this is gonna go in with your I-series grade motherboards. And these i-series boards have the same scrap recovery value as the AMD socket boards. Now these AMD socket boards are easy to, to spot. They'll have a plastic socket. Uh, sometimes it might be solid. Sometimes it might have this very small uh, socket in opening here. Uh, but the easiest thing is if you look along the edge here, it will either say AM or FM in the descriptor. So very easy way to figure out what this is. And again, if you look at this board, you can see that there's very little scrap value here. We've got uh, a tiny little chip here, uh, actually a BGA type chip. We've got <laughs> very small connectors here for RAM and expansion boards. Uh, there just isn't a whole lot of gold bearing material on these types. So remember I told you that it was some possible confusion where we have an older board like this that appears to have a solid socket that you might think is one of these newer AMD boards of lower value. But if you look at this board, you can see multiple gold tab BGAs, a ceramic CPA. And if you look at this display, plate right along here, you will not see an AM or an FM symbol on it anywhere. 
So wherever you see something that says AM or FM or a socket AM or FM, you know you're dealing with an AMD board and that goes together with your I-series type motherboards. And then we finally end up with the integrated motherboard, probably the least scrap value of all of them. There's no socket at all on here. You've got a flip chip on here, no gold tab BGAs, very few ICs or BGAs. So very low scrap recovery value on this. And you'll find these frequently in things like point of sale systems or in uh, small mini computers that were intended to be uh, hooked up to a network where the network was doing all the thinking, not the PC. Now, aside from the fact that I have to reorganize my boards here, this all makes perfectly good sense and it'll make grading out the boards a whole lot easier moving forward. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help you out the best I can. And I encourage you to go check out boardsort.com. Uh, they have some really good little videos on their uh, e-price list. Uh, you can hover over the, the item to see a picture or you can click on the video. And Chris does a real good job of explaining what category things are in and how to identify them. I'm going to get busy separating these. Why don't you check out the videos that are popping up on either side and the round thing in the middle. That's to help you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a safe week, everybody.